pirates, pigeons, pegging. pegging. That's what we do, pegging, baby. Pigeon, right. pirates. <laughs> understand the food of our present, we must first understand the food of our past. That's why we're recreating some of the most notable meals throughout history, and today we're going back to a time when walking the plank was all the rage. Ooh, 2009 was a great year. Actually, I'm gonna do that right now. Can you do it no, on my back? No. Walk my back. I don't. Walk my back. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 get off, get off, get off. Why? Wait, do you actually want me to walk on your back? No, okay. it, it was more for the bit. What's back there? My back <laughs> and my something in my crack. I fit it in, again, yay! Don't say fit it in when you're talking it's about It's time your for Meals of History. All right, like today we are recreating food that pirates ate during the golden age of piracy. That was like the end of the 17th century. And right here, we have an authentic pirate artifact that diagrams out one of the most famous foods of the time. This looks like the same font that my mom used for a baby shower. Oh, year. your mother is a privateer, eh? Yeah, I don't know. This looks like, uh, but you know, I, I like the spirit of what you're doing. This isn't exactly an original artifact. Wasn't a lot of stuff written down back in the pirating days, but this is an actual recipe that was uncovered by historians from Port Royal, Jamaica. It was a tavern that was very popular with pirates and they finally docked. And so this is a recipe for Selma Gundy. It was like the ultimate pirate feast. They would start their journey with it when all the food on the ships was fresh when they docked this is what they eat it was just a giant mishmash of all the chopped fish shellfish meats whatever seabirds they could find they'd chop it up hit it with spiced wine and then throw it in a giant cob salad situation so you could take this with you on the ship this wasn't a to-go order situation. this was not no this was like a am getting hammered at this port for the next 36 hours before I just have to go get scurvy and eat hardtack biscuits on a <laughs> ship again so that's what it was they were mostly eating dried goods right the life of a pirate was tough. You didn't have a lot of fresh vegetables or fruits on there, and you never really knew how long you were gonna be out at sea. And so when they feasted, they feasted hard. So we're gonna recreate this Samagundi faithfully to this recipe. We also got okay. a couple other little things in store. Ooh, surprises. Yeah, they're not great, because a lot of pirate food, mm, honestly wasn't that great. I thought that food being eaten in the middle of the ocean on a ship was supposed to be delicious and fancy. <laughs> oh boy, do I have a surprise for you. You go get dressed up, and we'll cook something together. How's it about that? I like how you sound when you talk. <laughs> Get this up. is my pirate voice, do that now. Bye. Well, hello there, Mr. No Pants. <laughs> you, I have jorts on, technically. Do I dress you as a guard, matey? Who be going there? We're not doing any of that. You know, you know that accent you kind of hear whenever you watch an HBO show that's in like a fantasy world and it's like it's British, it's Australian, it's Irish, it's all over the place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're working with today. What are you kind of sound like one of the Australian contestants on Love Island? I don't know that island, but it sounds pretty good. Uh, can I ask who, who you are? What's your, what's your name? What's your story? Well, I'm Wavy Man. Wave. <laughs> Wavy man, how'd you get that name? I think it has something to do with the, I got a touch of the spina bifida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that speaks to a good point, right? I feel like we romanticize the life of a pirate a lot. You think it's all good times, buried treasure, drinking rum, singing on a boat. Yep. Sounds like it was a lot of crippling disease and pain. Not for me, I was actually pretty healthy. Just a spider bifida. Just a spider bifida. You look pretty upright. They fixed your wavy mave. <laughs> no, it goes like this, not like that. <laughs> okay. Are you an active pirate? Uh, well, at the moment, I'm kind of looking for a new ship. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of between ships. Yeah. Bit of a gap on that pirate resume. Well, I, my, I actually been sailing with a couple of ladies. Ah. Mary Reed and Anne, they found me. I was actually marooned on an island uh, because the last ship before that I was on, uh, they found out I was a woman. Mm. And then I tried to talk about like uh, equal opportunity. Oh, tough. And tough they sledding. were like, get out of here. Yeah, things won't change that much. But yes, yeah, so uh, Mary and Anne, they found me and then they brought me on the ship. Can I cook you some pirate food? Oh, great. I was a cook on my ship. Really? So you must know all about hard tech then. When you're a cook on the on a pirate ship, uh -huh. you're mainly just uh, also a surgeon. Oh, yeah. We just um, we cut people's legs off. That makes sense. I think my hernia is back. I can't help you. I can't cut off your you whole. Can't. I just cut things off. Yeah, I don't that, cut things uh -huh. out. Kind of similar to being a butcher. Uh, well, that's okay. cool. So we're going to make hardtack right now. You can't talk about pirate food without talking about hardtack. It's simple. Ooh, Two yes. ingredients, flour and water. All you do is just mix this together until it becomes a hard dough. And then you bake it off. The reason they would do this, it's basically like the worst saltine you've ever had. Forgive me if I'm wrong. It would just break people's teeth when they'd eat it, right? Oh, yeah. I'm one of the very lucky ones who has all their teeth. <laughs> that's good for you. I always think that with my dental problems, if I was on a pirate ship, uh, just could not survive. It would just be a shattered tooth, and then I'd be done. Then you'd just be like, let me cut out your tongue. Maybe that'll help. No, I, I cut out your teeth. You cut, you just cut, oh, out. I cut out your tongue. I don't know. I know the difference. I don't know anything about medical. Excuse me, I'm wearing a pirate scrunchie that will like get in the way. <laughs> 
Is that the technical term? Pirate scrunchies? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are many types of scrunchies per character that I'm playing. (laughs) We've got Yeti scrunchie. We've We've got Yeti scrunchie. We've got rat scrunchies. All right, so hardtack, it was literally, it was just the most shelf-stable thing. And this was typically like if you were on a long journey. Right. The hardtack was like the last thing left. Yes. It could be months on end where all you're eating is hardtack. And this is stuff that has like survived a multi-continental several month long journey. So often they would just be like infested with weevils. If the barrel ever got wet or anything, it would just mold them up. Well, sometimes you eat the mold. Yeah, I mean, you got to. What else are you gonna do on a ship? Drink. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Since seawater, obviously you can't drink. I don't know if you can. You well, tried? I feel like a lot of people would have tried. I mean, sometimes you get really thirsty and so then you just kind of give it a go. But yeah. Like, nope, <laughs> yeah. can't do it. <laughs> We've all been there. Oh, most definitely. We've all been there with Keystone Light at a party, right? We're like, this seems like you should be able to drink Ooh, it. Who is Keystone like, Light? <laughs> oh, he's a famed pirate of the, of the beer pong ship. I like that. Do you have any particular tips and tricks to make a hardtack more palatable? Not really. Um, I was just kind of whipping stuff together. I wasn't a very good cook. Yeah. I would just kind of go, oh, here's some seeds. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like you didn't have a lot. Of, the food was not very plentiful, right? No, nice not really. See. Yeah. We um, luckily there was like little mice and stuff that would get on the ship. Mm. Also, it was uh, we had a lot of parrots. You had a lot of parrots? Yes. Oh, that was a real thing. You just eat the parrots. Sometimes we mainly used them for trade. Ah, oh, interesting. We like to trade. The, it was the the uh, exotic pet game was very. <laughs> very strong. That has survived in Burbank. Big exotic pet stores around here. Oh, really? Yeah, I can show you something. It'd be nice. Yeah. All right, hold on. So we're just going to cut this into squares. So hardtack, not only used by pirates, but also by like uh, armies. Even in the future, so there's actually a Civil War journal that describes the exact dimensions of hardtack and it's two and seven eighths inches by three and one eighths inches and then a quarter inch thick. I don't know if in the back, in the daytimes, we use the metric system <laughs> or not. <laughs> but I'm going to pretend that I know what inches are for the sake of this I feel video. like you probably did. Are you British? What? What's your original country? I told you, you this is a from? standard HBO fantasy <laughs> <laughs> accent. I'm probably from Luxembourg or something. Right. Uh, and if this actor was doing an accent in True Blood, it would sound like, Hi, y'all. I mean True Blood. This is how people talk. You know what's really funny, though? So, like, even if they're, if they're showing, like, an old-timey thing, if it's, like, an ancient Roman show, they'll still have the weird British accent. I know. And I thought that was weird until there was this movie with Channing Tatum about Roman centurions, and they all had American accents, and I could not that watch it for more than eight minutes. I don't know. Did you see Alexander the Great? When, no. Okay, so, like, Angelia Jolie has, like, I'm a Transylvanian these, I'm accent. <laughs> it makes no sense. You, just, you gotta go just universal. You just gotta kind of British, half pirate, kind of pirate, kind of Irish, kind of Australian. We're gonna bake those till they're just done and there's no more moisture left into them, and then we're gonna shatter our teeth trying to eat them. Is that all we're doing? A little bit for now. Okay, cool. Can we drink? <laughs> Where's the grog? All right, so I think that- Hello! Hurt. Where did you get- Was that Grog? It is Grog. Where did you find Grog? I always know where the Grog is. Well, it was below you. deck. Would you like to go down there with me and get your own? Grog, you say? It was Irish that time. Did you hear it? <laughs> Where's me Grog donkey? Oh. <laughs> really? Ah, Groggy. Oh, that's nice. That's ah. nice. I found my phone. All right, so here we go. Just- Ooh, nice and yeah, dusty. Yeah, that's what you want. You want the dusty hardness. Because again, this is subsistence food. This isn't meant to taste good. The life of a pirate is rough. None of you could read. Oh, you know, no. it was just... <laughs> Who told you that we can't read? Where did, did you get formal schooling? What was going on? Well, I did because my father actually was a... He was literate. Good for you. We weren't rich, but he was uh, he was actually the local pustule popper. Did you leech people? Were you a big leech family? We did leeches, yes, but it was mostly like if you had pustules or boils, yeah, yeah, yeah. lance them for you. Yeah, <laughs> mostly lance and just a little bit of leeching. Maybe we should charge people to come watch. Yeah, oh, God, I don't there's like a market this. I'll that. tell you, you should start a YouTube channel, Dr. Do Pimple Popper. Do you all know that millions. joke that I'm making about Dr. Pimple Popper <laughs> in a pirate setting? <laughs> That is so scary. So I'm sorry. So I'm trying to bash up this hardtack so we can turn this into porridge. Because, of course, as you know, people will take the hardtack and be too hard to physically eat. Because, I mean, this is just really tough. Ow. It's and so hot. they would boil it into a porridge. So I'm just going to take right. this and just ah. really bash the heck out of it. We're just going to take it and just, eh, eh, ow. And just crack it into there. And so you take it and just like uh, a hard cracker and boil it into porridge. And then they would actually flavor it with rum because there was just rum in everything y'all ate. Y'all just were just drunk constantly, right? Well, yes. I guess that's the way to deal with uh, anything. 
in life, that never changed. Definitely made you a lot more confident. <laughs> yeah. In, uh, you know, pillaging and such. Was that mostly what you did, though, pillaging? No, I'm more of a, I don't know, I don't really like violence. I participated, uh, but I mainly just got things by asking nicely. Ah, and people were, were receptive to that? Yes, after I told them that I, like, had a sword. Yeah. Like, yes. hey, give me a stuff. And they'd be like, no. And I'd be like, I got a sword. Ah, and they'd be like, oh, ah. oh, here you go. I feel that. I feel that. If there was one misconception that people have about pirates today, like, you have an audience right now. Tell them what you want them to know about pirates. Big misconceptions. Number one, we don't wear the eye patches because our eyes are missing. <laughs> it's hard to have depth perception in the dark. I thought it was like Nelly with the Band-Aid. Like what just is kind Nelly of the, with the Band-Aid? You know, Nelly with the, ne ba Band-Aided Nelly was a pirate. Oh, I don't know her. Oh, you don't know her? Oh, no, no, no. It, well, I'm it more was... of a Grace O'Malley fan. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Shimmy, shimmy, Coco, what? Listen to him now. That's what he would say when he would board people's ships. Wow. Old oh, band-aided Nelly. That's a lot longer than shiver me timbers, which we do not say. <laughs> what is? Where does that come from? Disney. Ah, uh, you're not seeing any of that Disney money. No, I'm no. not. I'm not Disney, seeing come any on. Disney either. Give, give Wavy Mave a movie. As I was alive in 1700s. There's so many. <laughs> All right, uh, well, we just got to boil this off a little bit more. You see, it's kind of, oh, uh, looks terrible. Ew! It's kind of, <laughs> it's getting there. It looks it's bad. like cereal. It's like grape nuts, but on a ship. I don't like what it. What else are you going to eat? you going to eat your parrots? No, you eat well, the hard tech I don't know. Porridge. I bet that they probably did that. Oh, they they actually, didn't keep the parrots, though. There was actually one famous Nobody pirate. Nobody really had a pet. They Makes usually sense. got rid of it. They sold it. I read a bunch of pirate manifestos. They were talking about eating flamingos. What? Yeah, there was this one pirate. He would just go around trying to eat all the most exotic animals he could eat. He was eating penguin eggs. He was eating flamingos. Mingos. He ate manatee, and then he did some other stuff to manatees, and then he also uh, was the first person to uh, use the English word guacamole. Wow! Wow! This guy would do very well in Paris <laughs> during the Franco-Prussian War. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. So if I'm understanding right, your pirating strategy, you'd go up to people in the villages and just be like, hey, it'd be pretty cool if you could give me all your stuff. Mostly we would go um, find other merchant ships and uh, we'd attack those ships. And then you'd just and then be like- take all their stuff. Ah! Ah, and then they'd- they just, well, we'd attack them and then we'd fight Oh, ah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so right now we're making like, this is the ultimate pirate feast celebration. This is called Salmagundi. It looks like Salmonella. Hey, you have Salmonella because that sash or whatever has been touching I all know, that raw chicken. I know, oh no, my sash. That's a death sentence on a pirate ship. They're gonna have to chop off all sorts of your limbs. I guess you'd have to <laughs> chop off your own. Yep. But no, Salma Gundy was like the big ass, big, why did I say big ass at it all of a sudden? Salma Gundy was like the big meal that they would start the voyage with. So this is basically whatever they had, they would chop up, they'd dunk it in a bunch of wine, roast it off, and then just make a giant salad out of it. So that's what we're doing. Wow, so pirates just <laughs> Sorry. You want to take a couple hacks? I'm a pirate who doesn't like splash. <laughs> Seems like it'd be tough. Whoa, Sorry, this is wait, a don't huge get my knife. Yeah, yeah, start, start, start whacking at that hey, chicken. Hey, Josh, why are there big butcher knives and then little butcher knives? The little butcher knives are the ones... Stop! Shut the hell up! Stop freaking yelling! I hate this you! This is a nice establishment! We're, We're at a Chili's! That's a great question, Wavy Mave. So the small butcher <laughs> knives so you can get in between the little joints are typically flexible. And the big butcher knives so you can hack through bone. Okay. Yeah. So All start right. hacking through them chicken bones. Really? Yeah, just give it a big whack. What I'd middle? say, try and cleave this chicken in half right down the center. Make sure all your limbs Maybe are clear. Maybe back up a little bit. There it goes, yeah, you did it. Oh, it wasn't in the middle. You like really nailed it though. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you kind of got to like, kind of hack, hack through the, the rib gate and the Why breastplate so a little splashy, bit. Josh? Why so <laughs> Yeah, we got a lot of salmonella over here. So Yikes. yeah, just gonna kind of give it a couple hacks. Just cleave it however you can. Go right, right through the spine. Are you in the splash zone? No, not yet, not right now. So we're just gonna hack out the chicken. They would just kind of layer everything in there. You wanna splash the fish? You want me to do it? This is gonna be a big okay, splashy one. How do you, okay, I'm interested so in how you So it's a really interesting technique. What up. you do, so the way you cut a fish up, ah! you just kind of give it one of those. Ain't no wrong way to do it, you know what I mean? We're actually following a recipe that we found from a port tavern in Jamaica from 1712. Port Royal? It was Port Royal, yeah, yeah. Cool, I Googled that. You're familiar? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hung out there. Yeah, I hung, I hung out there. But yeah, this is like a literal recipe that was written down ah! in a book about pirate history from 1722, but the recipe's from 1712, and it was literally like, ham and salt pork and like any type of fish that they had, they would put shellfish in there. And so it was literally a thing that was so popular on pirate ships. Black Bart, when he was captured, was super hungover feasting on Salma Gundy when the British Navy finally captured him. So this was good for a hangover? This is, <laughs> yeah. Why, you got one? I don't know, just always looking for new tips and tricks. <laughs> My current uh, hangover food is mostly uh, salt and vinegar Pringles and uh -oh. ginger ale. I got bacon on my shoes. 
I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. This is probably as close to a poop deck as it's going to get. Yeah, that's, this floor. that's pretty fair. We got a bunch of like whipped cream on this floor. You did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still sticky. You can still kind of smell it. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yep. And so now we're just going to salt and pepper this because salmagundi literally uh, sal meaning salt. And so it actually has the same root word as like salami because there's a lot of preserved meats. Mm -hmm. They would just salt, grab a swig of that wine and just like chuck it all over this. This is what they do. They would marinate the meats in wine and then they would take any vegetable, any sort of pickles, any sort of dry sack. Why did you pick this? Oh, that's actually my pirate name. It's Josh Drysack. Wavy Maven Drysack. It's an ironic nickname because the sack's always wet. Oh no. Should have called him <laughs> Moist Sack. This is looking pretty good though. Wait, this is wine? It's like orange. It's so cherry. So this is actually a fortified oh. wine. One of my favorite things is just drink casually. Yeah, that should be enough. And then this is literally just gonna flavor the meats, but I already have one roasting in there. We got some extra special treats in it. Oh, when you say treats, I know it's not a treat. Pot brownies. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a hefty, it's a hefty platter. <clears throat> What is that? Yeah, so this is a um, so this is a whole this is a pigeon. This is just an honest to god pigeon. Where'd Smell it? Get... Smells like wine. Oh, that's adorable. It's a lonely life. We got it from a we got a pigeon guy. You got a pigeon guy? Yeah, I wouldn't call him a hunter. He's more like a pigeon wrangler, you know? <laughs> Because a hunter implies he has a gun, but a pigeon wrangler just kind of runs around Burbank with a little net. Oh, a little net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I bet he's really popular. No, these are these are food pigeons. These are squad. These are wild hunted uh, okay. from Scotland. And then we got all the rest of the stuff. Uh, we got our ham. We got some other little tiny fish. Again, they would just put whatever in there. Like I said, we have this actual recipe from 1712. We shall consult it. Add the meats to boiled chopped cabbage, anchovies, pickled herring, mango, hard boiled eggs, palm hearts, onions, olives, and grapes. Add pickled chopped vegetables and garlic, chili pepper, mustard, salt, and pepper, and serve in a mound upon a large dish. We have our large dish. All right. We have all the ingredients. Let's get to doing it. And you'll start chopping these up into smaller bits. Oh. I'd say, like, you know, hit this into thirds, but I want to keep that head intact because I'm eating that eyeball. You're going to eat that eyeball? I'll fight you over the squab eyeball. Oh, okay. Uh, not a lot of detail in recipes from 1712 exactly, but I'm guessing with the chili pepper, the garlic, and the mustard, they're probably making some sort of like dressing. So I'm just gonna like grate some of this garlic into a dish. There it is. Really give it a hack. Really the smoky. Butcher of the Seven Seas. Even a lot of the explorers that we learned about in school, like they were just actual pirates. Like Sir Francis Drake, an explorer, was just an illegal pirate until I believe you he was go, buddy. knighted. I'm just gonna put this in your pocket oh, for later. I've got me bird. There you go. That's good. good bird. So a lot of these pirates were going to these like exotic locales where they were only eating like British or Western European food. And then they were actually like, you know, dining on really cool things they'd never seen before. It's so, like the word barbecue literally came from a pirate. The word guacamole came from a pirate. How though? I don't understand. Because he like literally would say, so barbecue, the term it's, uh, I believe, uh, barbacoa comes from an Arawak word. Oh. Which is like from the, the West Indies in an indigenous language. And so we literally turned that into the word barbecue. And then over the next 500 years, now you go to Chili's and get your barbecue chicken sandwich. So a lot of history was kind of formed by these pirates. And again, a lot of them were just like terrible people. No offense, no offense. Like you, you had a hard life, you had a hard I job, mean, you I, know. I will, but... I, by the way, I'm totally committing just to the, the pirate voice now. <laughs> the other ones were too hard. So we got vinegar, we got mustard. We're gonna make like a little bootleg vinaigrette So I'm right just here. putting this in a pile, you said. Uh, well, hold on. And let me let me get some chopped cabbage down here. Okay. I'm just gonna arrange the chopped cabbage around and then you're gonna use the chopped cabbage as a base. This is just boiled and chopped. But is cabbage like, what is, is it good for you? Is it good I don't for know. digestion? Like why I cabbage? I like it. But yeah, it's got fiber in it and it's cheap and it lasts for a long time. So that's the thing, like cabbage will last you weeks in your fridge whereas lettuce goes bad. So hence, oh, pirate food, that. cabbage. Yeah. All right, okay, hold on. Let me, let me get some vinaigrette over this cabbage. Just chop up some more meats here. We'll Just start arranging the meats around. Bones. Yeah, we'll eat the bones. Oh no. I'm gonna start arranging all the insane ingredients. There was just olives, mangoes, grapes, Bunch of pigeons. Arr! There you go. <laughs> Bunch of hearts of palm like we're at the damn Foga de Chal. Oh, this looks just like the, the tiny first mate that I had to <laughs> oh, help yeah. out one day. I was like, eh, you don't need that. And then I would be the one who had made the uh, little fake legs for them out of wood. I would fashion it, I'd kind of carve it up. I'd call it pegging. Oh yeah, pegging. No, no, that has a, that's, that's the same as what it means today. Yeah, yeah. Really? They carried on my tradition? Or? Your pegging tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, pegging is alive and well. I like mm -hmm. to peg. Yeah, try like... pegging. Give pegging a try. Why not? Yeah. All right, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with this. This looks pretty dank. All right, can I take a couple swings here? Yes. Let me just start hacking up. Got a big old chicken breast right there. There we go. Here we go. Just ah! give, it a, give it a nice little schwack. We're going to pop that back in there. <laughs> Why? Because nah, no reason. Oh, it's not. No reason. We can't go back to chicken after eating that delicious. We pigeon. are pigeon pirates only. So we're just gonna. We're, we 
Pirates, pigeons, pegging. pegging. That's what we do, pegging, baby. Pigeon, right. pirates. <laughs> now we're just gonna stack that up on here. They said put it in a large mound on a dish. Speaking just of pigging. Couple... Yeah, go ahead. Did you know that pirates were mostly gay? No way. They were a little, a dabble, a little of both. Yeah, both. well, I mean, you know, gay, straight, it's all love on a boat, baby. Manatee, who cares? We're, yeah, all, in there. we're all in there for a good time. Pigeons just, you know? pigeons, pirates. <laughs> They didn't have labels back then. They didn't need labels. It's all free love, man. Keep chopping up these meats. God, oh no. Welcome to the cooking show. But it's yeah, true. I, I didn't really there. get to have a lot of boyfriends because they weren't really interested in me. Wait, really? That's like actually true though? I found out that they were very open about it because you know, it was something that was punishable by death then, but so was being a pirate. Yeah, so you might so as well. So who cares? Guess, probably, Live attracted, your life. probably attracted a lot of people just like trying to, you know, find freedom of expression in many ways. Right? That looks like hell. I don't think so. I think it looks pretty great, man. There's a, I keep stepping on a chunk Get of ham. This. <laughs> yeah, put the floor ham on there. Put no, the it's got ham. some hair. There's hair on the ham. I feel like we should garnish it with something. Well, there you go. There you go. Yarr. We have the Selma Gundy. All right, Wavy Mae, the oh. pegger with spina bifida. That bucket is Swap. used for other things where I'm from, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was used for that too. We just gave it a little Oh rinse. boy, it's the slop. Swap us up some of that hard tack and rum porridge. You God. have that slop first. Mm, I guess if it's like between this and just breaking your teeth on some gross saltines filled with maggots, I'll take this. It smells nice. It's cooked in rum. <laughs> it still smells like rum. So you can chew on your drunk. <laughs> this is like the vodka so gummy bears of, of the golden age of piracy. I don't know what that is. That's time from the 1700s, Josh. <laughs> you wanna eat this slop, boy? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. Okay, let's, uh, this is real sloppy. I'm very excited. Mmm. <laughs> I get why they say that now. It eats like oatmeal, um, and it's getting you drunk, which pirates were all the time just to cope with the PTSD, my god. Yeah, this is problematic oatmeal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, this is what this is. Uh, we got bone soup. Oh, cool. After you ate all the meat with the Salma Gundy, they would just boil the bones. Uh, they were way ahead of Gwyneth Paltrow on the collagen phase, am I right? Yep. I'm just, I'm oh, just, we use I'm it. I'm going we, bowl oh, we on do it. this. Oh, I mean, that's a, oh, that's a delight. Oh, we're like halfway to fun. Ooh, I like oh, that. Oh, okay. How do we eat the meat though? Okay, it's mostly bones and cartilage. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it makes a pretty tasty and wholesome broth. It is delicious. And again, we got beef jerky back there because once all the fresh stuff was Ooh. gone with the Salma Gundy, you were just on jerky. Beef chest. But should we get into this now? I guess. So the way to eat it is you just kind of grab fistfuls of things you wanted. Do you want the head? No, you already said that you really wanted that. So, oh. Grab some. Oh God, the sound. This is the worst oh, ASMR. I mean, it's roasty, toasty, you taste it. Hey, come on. What okay, you, all right, all right, all right. What are you doing? Grab a little fish nugget. Okay, I like I'm gonna take a pigeon breast. Oh, this looks really good. Yeah, grab a little fish tail, watch out. There's a lot of bones in that. You're gonna wanna try and bite off the filet off the spine that and one? suck the bones out of it. Okay. The pigeon breast is really good. I'm gonna Ooh. go and get some egg and some pickles in here. I want a knowledge. This is how I wanna eat. I love this because it's like a choose your own adventure novel, right? Let's do the real meat. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and just suck off this sardine. <laughs> What? Well, this has been great. Unfortunately, I uh, I would like to have your show, please. No, come on. I know you're all bluff. I have a knife. Got a knife. Got a knife. Got a knife. <laughs> no! Oh, no! Take that, you pegging scallywag! No, my mutiny did not go as planned. <laughs> mutiny, scoundered. That's not a word. I don't care. We've said it. Ah, uh, you win, sir. Thank you so much, Wavy Mave and the Dirty Boys, for yep. stopping by the show. Thank you so much for watching the Mythical Kitchen. We've got new videos for you every week. We've got new episodes of our podcast. A hot dog is a sandwich every Wednesday. Wherever you get your podcast. Do you, you want monster. the sword back? No, really? I'm just gonna kind of stick quit, it in there. Quit poking it around in there. Follow us on the Instagram under hashtag dreams become food or at mythical kitchen or whatever. It's been a pleasure. Aye, aye. aye, aye, aye. Hey you, cook up your own feast while wearing the mythical kitchen apron. Available now at mythical.com.